Hey what's up guys, Alex here. Welcome back to another Nothing But Trucks, where we highlight all the trucks made from a manufacturer. Today we will be looking at all the trucks made from Autocar. If you want to get the full history of Autocar, it's in our truck history playlist. Now, let's get started. Originally named the Pittsburgh Motor Vehicle Company when it started in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but was renamed the Auto Car Company in 1899 when it moved to Ardmore, Pennsylvania, outside of Philadelphia. In 1899, Auto Car built the first motor truck ever produced for sale in North America. The Auto Car Delivery Wagon boasted a payload capacity of 700 pounds and optional 5 or 8 horsepower motors. The engine under the seat design maximized area for freight and was the precursor of Auto Car's cab over engine design used on every Auto Car today. The first Auto Car truck was also purpose built, in this case, to carry and deliver packages. Its design was declared to be so simple to use that any driver can operate it with more safety then he could drive a horse. In 1907, Autocar began to give serious attention to the development of motor trucks. That year, Autocar had announced the launch of the revolutionary Type 18 truck, developed for taxicab work and other forms of commercial hauling. Later on, it was adopted by the U.S. Army, which was used as a staff car, machine gun, and ambulance coach. In 1908, the 1.5 to 2-ton capacity Type 21 truck was introduced. The frame for the 97-inch wheelbase model was made of pressed steel channel reinforced with hard wood. This construction combines strength and resiliency in a peculiar degree and acts as a shock absorber in protecting the mechanism from the effects of vibration and strain. The four-cycle water-cooled motor featured two horizontally opposed cylinders. It was equipped with double flywheels and a crankshaft mounted on ball bearings. These two models lasted from 1907 to 1918, but the Type 21 truck was later renewed in 1918 and then was sold till 1922. In 1921, a 2 to 3 ton capacity Type 27 truck was placed on the market. Autocar also offered the 4 to 6 ton capacity Type 26 that had been first introduced in 1919. These models had the dual solid rubber rear tires. Eventually, these solid tires would give way to balloon tires. The Type 21 renewed in 1918 and lasted until 1922. The Type 26 4 to 6 ton models lasted from 1919 to 1925. And the Type 27 2 to 3 ton went from 1921 to 1925. However, very few were still produced as late as 1933. The four-cylinder engine was still under the seat. Autocar sales material emphasized the advantages of such a design. For example, operators would save time and space at congested loading and unloading places, save in quick maneuvering in crowded streets, and save valuable space. Such a design also allowed for larger payloads due to saving wear on mechanical parts. The 1.5 to 2-ton model was rebuilt and reconditioned in 1918 and got an updated 2-cylinder engine. There was also a 6-ton tractor version model HT with a 4-cylinder engine and a 106-inch wheelbase. Here is a look at a 1922 Autocar Type 26 B truck, a 1922 Type 27 K truck, a 1921 Type 21 F truck, and a 1922 Type 21 UF truck. Around this time, Autocar also came out with their E1, E3, and E5 electric trucks. These trucks had a carrying capacity of 1, 3, and 5 tons. Batteries were located between the axles in an enclosed box. The cabin was unified with gas engine models, but most of them were closed wooden. This lineup lasted from 1919 to 1928. In 1926, Autocar began to produce a parallel line of conventional engine under the hood models. They were designated by the letter C in the index. The range included 3-ton models CK and SCKA with 4-cylinder 32 horsepower and 6-cylinder 41 horsepower engines, 3-ton dump trucks CHPDS, 3.5-ton models CKAS and SCKAS with the same engines, and 5-ton models SCM and SCL with different wheelbases and a 6-cylinder 48 horsepower engine. There was also a tractor version, SCMT, with a 6-cylinder engine. The Type Cs went from 1926 to 1931. That same year, the Autocar Model A was also introduced. The Model A was a deluxe one and a half ton delivery truck. The official document said, It is unique because it combines speed and beauty with motor truck stamina. Each of these three elements has been given equal consideration, and the result is a balanced unit that was previously unavailable to the buyers. It had electric lights, four wheel brakes, and self-starter, which was very uncommon in the middle 20s. It was equipped with a four cylinder 25 horsepower engine. The Model A lasted only three years, from 1926 to 1929. 
In 1929, Autocar presented two new six-cylinder trucks, one of one and a half and the other two-ton rating, which replaced corresponding four-cylinder Model A units. The name six-cylinder dispatch applies to both chassis, and the tonnage ratings are distinguished by the model designations SA and SD, respectively. Appearance was considered, as well as mechanical details. In designing the dispatch models, the radiator, hood, and cowl have been proportioned to give a pleasing impression. The company offered a deluxe coupe cab for the chassis which harmonized with the chassis lines. This series went from 1929 until 1932. In 1930, Autocar introduced the Autocar Rangers, low-hung, high-powered, long-lived, precision-built to give a complete satisfaction on any kind of long-distance or short-haul, heavy-duty work. Key components according to Autocar included the low-hung 9-inch frame, triple range of transmissions with 12 forward speeds, standard equipment pneumatic tires, and the 90-horsepower 6-cylinder Autocar Blue Streak engine. Initially, the Autocar Ranger lineup included six models in rated capacities, up to 5 tons. The TEA, TEB, TEC, TFA, TFB, TFC, but later that same year, Autocar expanded the lineup with the introduction of six-wheelers Model G, Model GA, and the Model GB. The Ranger series lasted until 1936. In 1932, Autocar presented two new heavy-duty models. The 30,000-pound gross-weight lorry Model FE was a four-wheeler, and the 45,000-pound Model GE, a six-wheeler with a four-wheel drive. Body and payload capacity of the Model FE is 8.5 tons. Basic design is the same for both models, and they incorporate the same engine, clutch, main and auxiliary transmissions, front axles, front springs, and steering gears, and the same type of air brakes on all wheels. The engine, which is a Sterling Petrol with six cylinders, develops 156 horsepower at 1800 RPMs. Rear axle of four-wheel Model FE is Timken Wisconsin Double Reduction. Full floating unit, Model GE is supplied with a Timken SWD 410W tandem axle. The Autocar FE and GE don't have a timestamp, but perhaps they were in production just that one year. In 1933, Autocar presented a completely new range of engine under the seat trucks, the Type U. It was equipped with a famous six cylinder Autocar Blue Streak engine with a power of 84 to 101 horsepower. Autocar reminded potential customers that the engine under the seat models are from 5 to 7 feet shorter than conventional trucks of the same capacity, yet they sacrifice nothing in sturdiness, power, or speed that present day standards require. Type U models were offered with 89 to 175 inch wheelbase. The cab identified as a special ironclad cab was equipped with side curtains rather than crank operated windows. The rear hinge doors provided easier cab access for the driver. Additional 3,000 pounds could be added to its payload, comparing with any conventional model. The bumper to back of the cab dimension of all cabs was 70.5 inches. Cab width from the fender edge to fender edge was 88.25 inches. According to Autocar, sales material, improved engine accessibility was another of the seven reasons to purchase the Type U. In designing engine under the seat, Autocar's expert attention was given to the accessibility of the engine. There must be no difficulty, Autocar engineers learned, in getting at any part of the motor at any time. The design resulting from this knowledge is as ingenious as it is successful, and it is no exaggeration to say that the engines in these new Autocars are literally more accessible than those in conventional motor trucks. So, all operations on the engines in the Type U auto cars can be easily performed by mechanics from two convenient locations, one in the cab and the other standing on the floor between the frame and the side of the cab. Type U had a vacuum boosted operated, Lockheed hydraulically operated brakes on the front wheels, and auto cars mechanically operated brakes on the rear wheels. The first generation of their U series spanned from 1933 to 1937. While continuing to produce the engine under the seat cab design introduced in 1933, Autocar began to produce a new style cab in 1935 for its lighter weight U models. Later, this cab fully replaced the old type. The second generation went from 1935 until 1952. The whole engine under the seat type U range consisted of a 3-ton model UD, a 3.5-ton model UDF, a 4-ton model UN, a 5-ton model UNF, a 5-ton model US, a 6-ton model UT, and a 8.5-ton model UTE. From 1936 to 1940, Autocar came out with the D, N, C, S, and T models. All conventional trucks at Autocar were updated. Trucks received a new wood metal deluxe cab and an updated front end, including a new grille, hood, and cowl. The range included new models and updated old versions. Here's a look at an Autocar DF and Autocar NF. 
1937, the auto car company took another important step in its invasion of the light duty field. It presented conventional models A and B in cab over engine versions, UA and UB. What is more, these models officially called cab over engine in contrast to the other type U models, which were engine under the seat. The model UA had a Hercules JXB engine, and the engine of the UB was a Hercules JXC. These trucks and the UR, U10, U20, U30, U40, and the U50 were still a part of the U family. Here's a look at a 1940 Autocar U50, a Autocar U30, and a Autocar U20. In 1937, Autocar presented two new models of medium weight range, the RM and RL. Autocar said, these trucks carry the heavy duty line down into the lower price class, the tag being well under any that Autocar has offered in years. By 1939, Autocar presented the new model RB, which replaced the model RM. This model is differed by new front fenders. The range also included the tractor version RMT with a 78 horsepower engine. From 1939 to 1940, all trucks received new shaped front fenders. Also, according to a new indexation of all autocar trucks, these models were called from C10 to C40. In 1940, Autocar presented its diesel-powered model DC100, equipped with a Cummins diesel HP600 that developed 150 horsepower at 180 RPMs. According to Autocar sales literature, the 200 horsepower supercharged HBS600 was also available as an option by 1946. Here's a look at an Autocar DC100T, an Autocar DC100TN, and an Autocar DC10064. That same year, the most powerful and heavy model in the range of all-wheel drive autocars was introduced. The DC144 equipped with a diesel engine Cummins, HB600 rated at 150 horsepower. The DC100 and the DC144 were in production from 1940 to 1949. The DC144 later was replaced by a more powerful DC144N with a turbocharged Cummins NHB600. In 1949, Autocar developed their snub-nosed version of the standard diesel, with part of the engine projecting into the cab, the Autocar DCU. One end of the engine cowl comes back through the cab and is covered with an insulated metal casing, but was easily removable for maintenance. The Autocar DCU was in production from 1949 to 1960. Here's a look at a Autocar DCU-70T, a DCU-75T, and a DCU-9764T OH. From 1950 through the 70s, the DC Conventional was in production and was recently relaunched in 2019. These were an extended range of specialized heavy trucks for the oil field industry. They also began to be equipped with a new metal cab. Here's a look at an Autocar DC-164N an Autocar DC-164SN, an Autocar DC-10364SOH, an Autocar DC-10564SOH, and an Autocar DC-2364SOH. In 1968, Autocar made an addition to their extensive line of heavy-duty trucks with a series of half cabs for construction use. The new Autocar CK64 models are designed primarily for ready mix and dump truck service. Main advantages of the half cab was improved maneuverability, accessibility, and weight savings. Trucks have a shorter turning radius since there's no front overhang. About 750 pounds is saved over conventional chassis with the same components. A number of diesels in the 180 to 250 horsepower range are offered as are a full range of transmissions and axles. The aluminum cab is laid out for an easy drive entrance and boasts excellent visibility. Sliding cab door has locks in open, closed, and halfway positions. Cab tilts 80 degrees to give excellent engine accessibility. This line of trucks went from 1968 to 1975. That same year, Autocar came out with the Autocar Constructor. That year, conventional trucks were sporting a new steel cab. While similar to previous cab design, the new units can be spotted by their larger windshields and side door windows. Instrument panels are made for fast and easy access to wiring, and the cab interior has been improved. Since 1970, all models in the DC range were equipped only with steel simplified fenders, similar to those installed to OH models. In 1974, the lineup included new construction versions, the KK9364B and KK9364F. This series lasted from 1968 to 1983. A decade after the first Constructor made its debut, the Constructor 2 was introduced. The Autocar Constructor 2 was designed for on, off highway application. Incorporating wide standard engineering, the Autocar Constructor 2 has a wide ranging specialized design and equipment features required for heavy duty service. The Constructor 2 brings all electrical circuits to one central replaceable module for easy repair. Additionally, all airlines are connected to a central pneumatic manifold and can be snapped in or out quickly and securely. 
In the early 80s, Autocar came out with the DK, DS, and the AT 64F. Funny thing about all three is they ran until 1987. The Autocar DS was a new range of lightweight trucks for the construction and refuse industries, a shorter BBC, and a variety of weight reduction features and options allowed to spec Autocar DS that can satisfy any gross weight requirements. The DS came standard with a fiberglass till hood with integral fenders for weight sensitive applications. In 1981, Autocar presented a new hi hat cab for conventional models. The elevated cab features larger windshield and rear window areas for better visibility. It also provides 2 inches of additional headroom compared to previous models. This new range was called the DK series. All the trucks were equipped with wide radiators. The AT64F cab was stamped out by Mayflower, and there are a lot of common parts available through Western Star. That cab is their Heritage series. The trucks were equipped with Caterpillar diesel engines, with an output from 325 to 450 horsepower. In 1988, they came out with their ACL lineup. They were equipped with different engines rated from 264 to 525 horsepower, manual or automatic transmissions, and cabins designed by Volvo. All products of the new company was branded as White GMC, while Autocar production was named as Autocar White GMC. Since July 1995, all White GMC trucks were produced under Volvo brand name, but the truck did still have the Autocar logo on the hood. This year's went from 1988 to 2001. Here's a look at an Autocar ACL 64, an Autocar ACL 84, an Autocar ACL 66, and an Autocar ACL 44. That same year, Autocar came out with their WX Expediter and the WX LL Expediter. During the first years of the Expediter, a second cab was unveiled. The WX had a regular cab and WXLL with a wide cab and low floor. Since 2000, the Expediter continues to exist, but only as auto car, and it was renamed ACX Expediter in 2011. It seems to be made only on the WX64 basis, and Autocar's website apparently no longer has the WX nor the WXLL models. In 2019, Autocar introduced the long-awaited brand new model, the conventional Autocar DC64R. The last DC series truck rolled off the production line in 1983, when the company changed the truck designation to DK. Autocar DC64R is a completely new model for severe duty refuse applications, developed from the ground up by the company's own forces. The DC64R is the first new conventional truck for Autocar brand in 31 years. The Autocar DC64R is the first truck ever built with frame rails made from ultra high strength 164,000 PSI steel. According to the company, this design is 24% stronger and lighter than the rails of other trucks on the market. This is extremely important even for a garbage truck because losing weight can increase the loading capacity. The DC64R is offered in a wide range of modifications. The standard version has a 6x4 3 axle chassis. It is equipped with a 9.0 liter Cummins L9 turbo diesel. The top version has an additional axle in front of the leading axles. It is equipped with a 12.0 liter Cummins X12. Transmission is Allison Automatic. So that wraps up a good portion of Autocar's trucks. They have so many trucks and even prototypes I could have included in this video. And maybe a part 2 could come later. But thanks guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Before you leave, like the video, subscribe to our channel, and comment below. What do you guys think of Autocar trucks? If you want to stay up to date on new content coming your way, or just discuss all things Chrome, tune into the Chrome Corner Wednesdays at noon with our host Dave Coleman. Thanks again guys for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack.